At the end of lockdown, I weighed 83.5 kilos. <laughs> it's all right. You can say something. The boys at the gym roast me about it all I, the time. I won't touch it. I won't touch it. I refuse. Yeah. Um, so when I f- made my debut for my professional fight, I stood on the scales 20 kilos lighter than what I was a couple months ago. So That would have been a tough battle. Yeah. Getting it down was insane. What was the strategy? I just had like I just had to work. I just had to clean up my eating and everything. Um, I did sign on to a nutritionist as well, mm-hmm. which made like massive. That's help. huge. But I, that um, is huge. Yeah, definitely made a difference. But I definitely just struggled with binge eating, like from fighting for so long. Like you go through these strict diets, and then I'd come out of it, and I'd know a fight was booked soon, and I'd just eat everything. I would eat until I threw up. Mm. Like I really had a problem with it because I was like, I was traumatized. I was like, oh, I can't have this. So I have to eat everything. Yeah. Get it all in now while I can. And then Mm. we went into lockdown and I didn't have these fights where I'd peak and then come back down. Well, that happens to a lot of fighters. I mean, Tyson Fury has that problem. Mm. He just blows up and he's like seven foot. Yeah. I think lots and lots of fighters have binge eating problems because of it. Um, I feel like I'm definitely more on top of it now. Mm. I think having that nutritionist there is a huge upper hand. Yeah, and I've said I'm going to keep working with him even when I'm not in camp Mm. because I just need that help and that checking in. Just until, like, it's just hard re-mending my relationship with food. Yeah. Um, But I sent you, one of the videos I sent you was me hitting pads at 83 kilos and then I sent you another one which is before the fight. Yeah, they should just Um, be there. Which ones are we looking at? Just the one where the mouse is now. (laughs) <laughs> so this is you at 83? This is me at 83 kilos, and I'm cringing so hard right now. Um, I mean, you still look sharp. <laughs> you, Everyth- you fucked everything, me up. <laughs> everything took a lot more energy to get out. Right. Um, so that was me at 83 kilos. And then if you go to the video that was just above it, that one there, and then this is 63.5 kilos, like everything. Wow, just felt yeah. Different. It's like a massive difference. I it, felt so much better. It just looks more fluid. Yeah. It looks like you've got more precision, more timing. There's intent. Yeah. You're not just throwing for the sake of throwing. Like there's real. Yeah. And then even like, so my last amateur fight was at 68 kilos. And the way I felt hitting pads leading up to that, like I was still fit mm. compared to the way I felt hitting pads for my last fight it was insane. I just think particularly for Muay Thai to get as skinny as you can is definitely the way to do it because i feel like i just everything flowed everything felt better like but don't you think as well if you put on five six kilos of muscle um you would have more oomph behind your kicks and more oomph behind your punches like look i do strength training as well and mm -hmm. i definitely feel myself getting stronger but i'm still i'm walking around like kind of the lightest i ever have right so i don't think i think when you get too bulky i think mma is different when you get too bulky for Thai boxing, you kind of just become slow. Right. Yeah. yeah. And I guess as well, because they are used to performing at such high speeds, you know, Muay Thai is a very quick You watch, quick you look game. at any Muay Thai fighter, you look at fights in Thailand, they're all string beans. Yeah. They're all like string beans with a six pack. <laughs> <laughs> I still don't have my six pack, so I'm pretty ripped off. <laughs> Even at my lightest ever, but that's okay. Um... So yeah, it's it's an interesting conversation around that. I, I'm really glad that you though that you went in and got the nutritionist, especially because I don't know if you're cutting a lot of weight to get into your fights. Like, how much are you cutting? You know what's funny? I feel like I get lots of girls reach out to me on social media and ask me for advice on doing big cuts, mm. and I'm kind of like, what are you guys saying? I get it a concerning amount. I'm like, do I just look like someone who cuts a lot of weight? I don't care. I'll message them and tell them, but. Like, I've done crazy cuts. I've done, like, 10 kilos in five weeks before. I've done some gnarly cuts. That was without a nutritionist as well. But um, at the moment... Who's supervising that? Um, I just did it. You know what? I felt fine. You know? Like, it's just one of those things. I felt fine when I did it. You know, I got the, I've never felt like I have fought and felt like my weight cut has impacted my fighting. Well, thank but God for that. I've always got down there never by a ridiculous amount of sweat. Mm. So I think when people are sweating out insane amounts, that's where the problem lies. Oh, absolutely. Um, so I've never really sweat more than 2.5 kilos, which is not a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I think my last fight on the day of weigh-in, I sweat out a kilo. 
So, I, like, majority of my cutting has come down from food. Okay. From my diet and my training. Um, yeah. I think for this one, so I've got, uh, I got two weeks left, and I've got five kilos, which is easy. Yeah. It'll it'll come like that. Yeah, that's doable, especially if you're active and you're training a lot. You yeah. you wouldn't even have to worry about the sauna stuff. Yeah, and I'm still eating like. Yeah, Enough. I feel the great. the water cuts just freak me out. Like I've seen some, I was watching some footage yesterday, mm-hmm. you know, and just the process that a lot of fighters go through in different disciplines as well. In wrestling, it's pretty tough, um, where you're seeing people literally knock on the brink of death just to get like the smallest competitive advantage in the ring. It's like if I can just cut a little bit more water weight, and when you start looking about the process that actually goes into it when you when you dehydrate the body to those levels we're not just talking about dehydrating and not drinking water but you're literally your body doesn't have any more water to give so the only way of getting rid of it is by sweating it is the only mechanism that's left and so you'll see a lot of fighters put on garbage bags or get into like um hot water like have hot salt baths or take diuretics like anything just to flush out their system as much um, water as possible but you got to think about the consequences of that your brain is 80 percent water yeah, totally. and a lot of that is just cushioning yeah. so if you don't have that same level of cushioning you're going to be a lot more open to concussions yeah. your blood thickens when you don't have high levels of water in there so suddenly you're looking at kidney failure you know people have died from weight cuts i definitely think um that we are getting better at it i feel like there's so many more nutritionists out there now and like the team at the fight dietitian are doing amazing work 